Real quick, let me just say that this trip would not have been possible without our awesome support crew. It also wouldn't have been possible without our van, which is why we're super excited to be partnering with Omaze again to give away a customized Sprinter van. We're gonna have all the details on this later in the video, but if you can't wait anymore, just go to omaze.com forward slash Kara and Nate. We're Kara and Nate. And we've spent the last four years traveling full-time to 100 countries. But 2020 brought us back to the U.S., where we bought a converted Sprinter van to explore our own backyard. If you missed last week's video, Nate is currently undertaking the most physically demanding challenge of his entire life. Our friend Rick talked Nate and his brother Dusty into riding the entire length of the Colorado Trail, which stretches 500 miles across the state and has an elevation gain equivalent to climbing Mount Everest three times. On a bike. Nate had been on a mountain bike approximately four times before he was talked into this trip, and his brother flew from practically sea level to attempt this high altitude challenge. I'm not sure which one of us is more crazy for doing this, me for having so little mountain biking experience, or Dusty for flying from sea level to go bike at over 10,000 feet for two weeks. I would say you. <laughs> Needless to say, the first day wasn't exactly the easy. The Colorado Trail's already putting us to the test. It's drawing blood. Dusty's tire's already flat. I mean, it's completely flat. Thankfully, the boys have a great support crew consisting of myself, Rick's wife, Beck, and their two awesome kids. My name is Frankie. My name is Evie. While the guys are out testing their physical limits each day, we're moving the vans along with them so that they have a warm bed to sleep in each night and delicious calorie-rich dinners to fuel them back up for the next day. Cheers. <laughs> in the last episode, the boys completed the first 30 miles of the trail, which means there are still at least 470 grueling miles that lay between their current location and the finish line in Durango. Pretty good, a little stiff. Morning, Dusty. Brought you a coffee. <laughs> All right, here we go. Day two, segment three, 12 miles and 2,000 vertical feet. Minus my back, I'm definitely feeling better than I thought I would this morning. I think Nate stole my chapstick. I guess he needs it more than I do. He always steals my chapstick. It's about nine o'clock, the boys just left. And everybody seemed great this morning. Morning. Today is going to be another pretty long day, but we are going to get to meet them halfway again to have lunch. I've really enjoyed being the support van and taking care of everyone, even though the van is an absolute disaster, if you can't already tell. There's literally a giant dirty cardboard box on our bed. <laughs> We've been storing Dusty's bike box under the van because we can't really throw it away because he needs it to fly the bike home. I was, I was gonna follow you, and then at the last second I was like, I shouldn't do that. <laughs> Lucky for me, the girls love to vacuum. Thanks for your help, girls. You wanna get under the bed too? Since I'm not the one biking 30 miles today, I'm making myself a smoothie for brunch. I'm kind of acting like that's a bad thing, but I actually love smoothies. A little almond milk, a banana, a few blueberries, lots of spinach, this little nut and spice mix thing that somebody gave us, chia seed, nut seed, functional mushrooms, this green superfood, moringa tree powder, so honey. It's not very pretty. Off to our next spot. Don't fall. This is 
not good. <laughs> this is not good. I left the sink full of water and now it's all over the ground. I don't know why I did that. But I'd try to save water, but here we are. <sighs> this is what happens when I'm in charge of the van and Nate's not here. Needed a good mop anyways. Oh, this is beautiful. Van, segment three. Somehow we've done almost a thousand feet of vertical climbing, but it feels like we've been riding downhill 90% of the time. I think the CT is gonna have a way of altering between this is the greatest thing in my life and I just love it to why the hell are we doing this? This is terrible. <laughs> it feels nice to be able to take a full breath. I uh, spoke a little too soon back there at the creek. It's been straight uphill since we left. Like 1,100 feet in the past hour, two or three miles. Well, dang. I have no idea how or when this happened. Is Rick like cilantro? Home stretch of segment three. They're back. Welcome home. Why are you only wearing one glove? Uh. <laughs> We have, we have another plan. Ow. Okay. Don't learn your lesson. No, it's where I'm at. Oh, yes, I was hoping it wasn't going to be peanut butter. <laughs> this is service I haven't even gotten off a bike yet. You deserve it. So, segment four of the Colorado Trail is located through a wilderness area, which doesn't allow bikes, which means that this will be our first detour of the trip. This is what it looks like. The purple line is the detour. So, if we were to do segment four of the trail, we'd be doing about 24 miles and 3,000 feet of vertical elevation, but instead we have a 70 mile detour and 8,000 feet of vertical elevation. And it's all on a road. So I suspect that it'll be decently boring. This could be the least fun part of the trip. Or maybe we'll feel like we're flying. sitting down having a snack and the next thing we know the wind picked up like 40 miles an hour and it just started pouring down rain. Whew. The van survived those rough roads, so did I. I have a feeling that the guys are gonna be really tired when they get here and it might take a while. So far this segment's been a little bit like a roller coaster. Slow uphill climbs with your bike down in the lowest gear and then just fly downhill. Oops. Nate usually pours the wine too. I'm starting to learn that I'm a little useless without him. Hmm. I hope they're having fun. Yummy. So before I get started on dinner, we're having a little appetizer. Somehow, before this whole trip started, we started talking about Spam. We met this guy who always eats it when he's hiking, and I don't know. We talked about it so much that Beck bought some for the trip, and she said it kind of smells like cat food. It also looks like cat food, unfortunately. But she fried a piece, and I must say, I came out of the van and I smelt it, and I was thinking, wow, something smells really good. And it was the Spam. <laughs> Day two. Day two Complete. in the books. Guess what you're just in time for. Guys. What? Spam lettuce wrap. Spam. Oh. <laughs> I think this is the first time I've ever had spam. Daddy. It kind of tastes like fried bologna. It does. Like fried bologna between lettuce with some pesto. I'm a fan. It's amazing. Not just for wartime efforts anymore. I mean, I 
yeah. in fairness, anything in th at this point in would <laughs> be pretty like. amazing. <laughs> oh, this sounded like so much more fun when I was biking up a hill burning up. Oh. Gosh. Oh, that feels good on the legs. It's uh, it's not exactly fun in the moment, but it's amazing how much better that'll make you feel. I'm making one of my favorite stews of all time, which is perfect because it's a little chilly tonight. It's nice and filling. We're pushing our bodies pretty hard each day, but as soon as we get back to camp, it's it's very luxurious. The girls are taking great care of us. I mean, Thank you. Are you telling me you're asking? All right, day two. I woke up this morning with a sore back, but besides that, feeling surprisingly good. I think up to this point, I've been really impressed with my endurance. Like I thought being the least experienced mountain biker in the group, I'd be like lagging behind by this point. But especially now that we're doing all these road miles, I tend to lose everybody on the downhills, but then as soon as we start going uphill, I feel like I don't have any problem keeping up, so. Man, that was fun. Yeah, I'm just feeling a lot better than I thought I would. All right, day two. We uh, woke up and had an awesome start to the day. Some wonderful flowy single track, which was exactly what we needed. I think after yesterday, Dusty was feeling a little worn out. He could have some elevation stuff going on. He's handling it well. He doesn't complain. Well, this is our fourth time meeting up with the van, and it's the first time that I've felt halfway decent, had an appetite at all. So I'm definitely riding a little bit of a high. If anything, he's just kind of quiet, so we're never like 100% sure. With that said, all day I'm still lagging behind. They'll usually pedal up ahead, and then whenever we're gonna stop and eat a snack, I'll eventually catch up. So they're probably still doubting whether or not I'll make it. And it's a worthwhile doubt because I'm not sure. But we'll see. I also kind of want to get through these sections because tomorrow's this big road ride. None of us are looking forward to it. Kind of just want to get out of the way. We did like 17 of the 70 miles today, and then tomorrow we do the rest. I'm, I'm dreading it a little because I think it could just be like really boring. I think it's gonna be long, hot boring morning feeling quite a bit more sore than I was yesterday Ugh. is it the cold chamois oh. yeah tell me about your the, cold chamois just waiting for the ibuprofen to kick in why was it it's cold? still wet because I washed it over yesterday because how many did you bring it needs more than one chamois <laughs> Every man needs more than one shit. <laughs> Which way's out? Good luck. Love you. Love you. Burr. All right, the first thing Beck and I need to figure out this morning is where to get water. So we filled up their jugs. The problem is we usually get water by putting a hose pipe into here. Not sure how that's gonna work with the pump. <sighs> Nate is the only one who has ever checked our water level and filled up our water. Oh wow, it's low, really low. Hmm, I have no idea how to get water in here. Since we have hardly any water, I'm gonna clean our dishes in the creek. So there's all natural, biodegradable, all that good stuff. That felt good. It's 8.08. The sun is already baking. And we started the morning with about a 500 foot climb straight out of the campground. Whew. Could be a long day. All right, we finished packing up camp. We're gonna worry about the water thing later. Hopefully we'll get that figured out. And we're going to meet the guys at the next meeting spot. Control the breath. Keep the legs moving. This is the way the guys are going. Whew. Easy in the van, but geez. After climbing straight 
straight out of the campground up probably 800 feet. We've got a beautiful downhill ride. Crisp morning air when you're not climbing. Woo! Fingertips on my right hand are so numb. Woo. Okay, we're on a paved road now. Still not sure where the boys are. Wait, is this bad? No, it's not. Two different bikers. Woo! Pavement! Yee wow, we're going so fast. We're gonna make some miles now. This is crazy. Did you see them? No. So it's saying now that we're 5.5 miles from them. And when we turned onto this road, when we turned right, it told me that they were 0.2 miles to the left. I love that house. Woo, I hated that. Weird, now it says we're nine miles away. Nine? Yeah, I'm gonna try to call. Hey. Hi. Hey. Where are y'all? On the road. Are you like on the paved big road? Yeah. Did y'all turn left or right? We turned left. Okay, we turned right. Are you sure y'all are going the right way? Right! Right! I think they went the wrong way. Right! Right! <laughs> I'm never gonna catch him. <laughs> we have ridden downhill since we uh, started. Come get him. So, oh, uh, come get you. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. We have been crushing miles downhill. I bet you have. Okay, here we come. All right, see you soon. I love you. Love you too. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Support van to the rescue! Ow, ow! You boys want to ride? It was such an awesome long downhill. I was like, when we get to the bottom of this, I'm going to joke that we told we went in the wrong direction. We're we're actually, we're going in the wrong direction. <laughs> We are good to go whenever you guys are. Koala's the radio. I know. It feels weird being in the car with you driving. I know, right? Oh, this is the most grateful I've been to be supported yet. The hot meals at night are nice, but if I would have had to turn around and ride five miles straight back uphill, <laughs> we were going so fast. Love you. Love What'd you make? Um, this. I'm almost starting to feel bad about how good we have it. Bagel with cream cheese and salmon for lunch. Feels a little unfair to the other people we're passing out here on the trail. Don't go left! All right, our goal is to knock out the last 35 miles of the detour and the last 4,000 feet of vertical elevation. I always get a little bit of a side cramp after lunch trying to shove as much food and water in my body as possible. So we're driving to the next meeting point and we just passed this public toilet. So we pulled over to dump our pee tanks. And if you've been following along in our van journey, you'll know that this is Nate's job usually and I've never done it. So wish me luck. Oh gosh. There's so much stuff in here. If I drop any pee, it's gonna be really gross. Maybe I should move the food at least. Okay. What's funny is I kind of knew I would be the one who ended up doing it this time. So I've been using the bathroom in alternative places on this trip. Anytime there's another option, I use it instead of ours. <laughs> so now I know how Nate feels. I honestly don't know what to do. Oh, maybe oh no, there's another one. Whoa. Okay, that's 
not so bad. It's not so bad. I thought, I thought the road was gonna be easier, and it would be. But there's a massive headwind. My bathroom was pretty gross, but this went well. Mm, Bigger. All right, my job here is done. So we just turned on this little dirt road, and Beck had this brilliant idea to wrap some beers in some foil with some ice and leave it on the side of the road for the guys as a surprise. And we're riding. What are you writing? Look an arrow. Nice. <laughs> Hopefully they see this. I hope they don't ride right past it. That would be so sad. It doesn't help that the bag is brown and blends in with everything. America, America. I highly doubt you can see it, but I'm just documenting that we saw a bald eagle. He's somewhere in the sky. We just drove about. 15 minutes out of the way to this town called Fairplay. It's quite unique because apparently this town is where the show South Park is based on. This is unbelievable! They also have a gas station with diesel, so that's really why we're here. I can't forget diesel, diesel, diesel. I've never done this either. Woo! Gold and windy here. Ah! Ah! What is going on? Gosh, the door's gonna slam me. This is crazy. Getting diesel, not gas. Also getting it on my hand, apparently. Now we're going to the market. The wind out here on the road has been brutal. We are riding downhill right now. but I'm pedaling like I'm climbing a hill. This, for 35 miles, and it's boring. These boys are eating a lot. Got a surprise for Nate. Donut apple fritters. This is like his favorite food of all time. Pasta, because more carbs. Potato chips, carbs. Bad news is, I'm eating all this too, and I am not biking 30 miles. Chocolate chip cookies. A whole bunch of fruit and veg because there is some nutrition around here. And of course, bubbly water. That's mostly for me though. This road riding, it's just weird. I thought this was gonna be the easy part, but outside of the wind, I'm just like developing numbness in my hands. And then uh, one more place that I'll let you guess. I think it's just from constantly sitting on the seat Supposed to when you're going down trails, you're standing up and sitting down. And this is just. So we just got a text from the guy saying that they were feeling a little shaky, and if there was a campsite even a few miles before the trailhead, that they would be open to stopping a little early. The problem with that is we went a different route than they did to go to this town, but I'm a little worried that they're fading and might need us sooner. So we just went ahead and turned around. It's looking like we're gonna get to their surprise beer at about the same time. Really hoping they get there first though. I love surprises. This is true support. I think a message we sent got blown a little out of proportion. We just happened to make it to the beer at the exact same time and I think they rode right past it. Rick said we were feeling shaky and the girls came after us. We just meant like it was a little bit of a low point. Not necessarily we need to be rescued. Getting out to get it. Well, no wonder they didn't see. <laughs> Just as good here as it would have been on that corner. I'm tired. <clears throat> My body hurts. And I don't want to sit up to confess on camera, but I'm going to do it. Day three, I think. 
This is the first day that I've just been like really glad for it to be over. Today was definitely the hardest day for me, but it was also a, a day where Dusty, I think, was feeling a little bit better. I think I am finally getting a little acclimated to the altitude because for the first time today, there was a moment where my energy levels were higher than Rick and Nate's. So that was a big accomplishment for me. Even though I kind of hit a wall, I think Nate kind of hit a wall for a minute where we got a little bit shaky because we probably weren't eating like we should. I don't know if it was like lack of food or just like more miles than usual, but. It felt awesome at lunch and then kind of didn't think about the 45 minute eating thing. We just got a bit careless and I had a beer at lunch, I had two beers at lunch. Anyway, it kind of got, it caught up to us. This morning was the first morning that when I sat down on my seat, it kind of felt like hot coals. But after a couple minutes, everything just goes numb. You get over it. It's important that we all know that we're all gonna have different emotions at different times and we just have to stick together and kind of get through that. So there was a moment where that happened today and it was cool. I mean like all in all, like the, the pain I'm experiencing right now is very manageable. Like. Today wasn't that bad, I got through it. It's just more of the idea of like, I hope this gets better because I still have to do this for at least 11 more days. I think we all realize we can do a big day. It's been a confidence builder. We learned a good lesson. The team got a little stronger today. All right, day four, we're gonna do a little experiment today. Rick's fitting me out with this, this heart rate monitor and it's on the watch showing what my heart rate is. 101. Oh, it's cause I get stressed out when I look at it. Plus we're at 10,000 feet. Also don't really feel good this morning, but um, by wearing this all day, it should give us an idea of how many calories we're burning, which will give us a better idea of how much we need to be eating. Love you. Love you. Twenty cows. Oh gosh! Ugh. That's a good way to knock out your momentum before the climb. There you go. That was the easy three and a half miles for the day. All right, we are on the road en route to Kenosha Pass to meet the guys for lunch. Unfortunately, I'm worried about Nate today. He just. Woke up this morning with a throbbing headache and a pretty upset stomach. Just really low energy. So, if I'm being completely honest, I'm a little worried about how today's gonna go, but thankfully the first five miles have come pretty easy. I have a feeling that's not indicative of the rest of the day though. I think the last three days have just caught up with him, but I'm hoping he, once he gets on the bike, he feels better, get those endorphins going. Also, we're, we're about 10,000 feet and those those fires that we were kind of worried about before the ride are definitely pushing smoke into the area that we're in now. I'm trying to just embrace this because what I wanted was a challenge and that's definitely what I'm getting right now. <clears throat> oh, you think that's not the way we go? Yeah, we should be able to pick it up here. We're out of the wilderness area. Ride to Kenosha Pass. After yesterday, we're making sure to look at <laughs> every map. If we see anything that even looks like a trail splitting off, or pulling out the GPS. Totally. All right, I think it's uphill for a long way from here. This is one of many snack breaks. Our goal that we're trying to be better about after yesterday. We're stopping every 45 minutes and making sure we eat something. Before the trip, we got some advice that we should try to consume somewhere between 200 and 500 calories per hour, which at that point, you're just like, it, that food doesn't even taste good anymore. You're just stuffing it down. <laughs> it's gonna take me 20 minutes to eat this. <laughs> I've been going with the strategy of you take one bite of bar, you gotta take a sip of water just to even chew. The yeah. idea of getting to eat every 45 minutes before we started the trail sounded really fun. And then when you get out here, it's work. Wow, this is beautiful. I'm going way too fast. 
Wow, I felt like I could die at any moment. I love this. This is the Colorado Trail I signed up for. Absolutely. This is the most Aspens I've ever seen. Man, that's the way to end the segment. That was awesome. <laughs> That was fun. Any Karen Nate fan show up with beer yet or what? Yes, this is awesome. <laughs> I was at a low point this morning. I was just like waiting for my body to just completely give out on me and it just never happened. Thanks, Frankie. If you don't follow us on Instagram, you're probably wondering what this whole beer thing is all about. So I'll fill you in real quick. Hi. The whole thing was like, Aww. On day one, I posted this, a little satellite GPS tracker Rick attached to his bike that allowed us to message them and see their exact location at all times. We thought it would be fun for others to follow the journey too and have the option to send the guys encouraging messages along the way. Rick jokingly made their team name Send Beer and some people actually did it. Mm -hmm. If I can, I'll take a little bit of it. It's going the wrong way. Let's race the chair. This way. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> so many roots. We are completely out of water. I think it's this one. This, I think, goes on the other one. Wish me luck. Okay. Uh oh, it's very difficult. Okay, this goes in here. Take this side. Over here. Get packed on this one. There we go. And then if you just turn it on, I'll hold this so it doesn't come back. Thank you. I hear water. Gosh, how does Nate do this without? You do hear water? Is there a camera? Mm -hmm. the oh, yep, there is. There we go. Is it coming now? Yep. Great. Right. We're halfway there. I just saw that big rock on my head. <laughs> it's, uh, how did you fall? Like my front wheel fell off, and then I just like went on my back right here. Mm. You just never really know what the Colorado Trail is gonna throw at you. We start it with some beautiful downhill after lunch, and then as soon as we feel like we're making progress, there's so many big rocks and roots that you just almost can't even ride over it. I mean, it's definitely rideable, but when you're doing 500 miles, you just kind of have to make the make the choice on what's worth expending the energy and what's not. This is not. What a mess. Water is everywhere. I wasn't recording. I pulled out the hose thinking like, oh, it's full. Not only was the hose pipe blasting water everywhere, but it was overflowing out of our tank and I didn't know how to stop it. <sighs> Maybe I should pay attention more when Nate's doing this stuff. Ouch! Pinch my finger. Ugh. Snack number four of the day, the girls got tired of listening to us complain about eating bars, so <laughs> they started making us curried potatoes. Woo! All right. The support vans are separating. The girls are going to a park to play for the rest of the afternoon. Unfortunately, I've been having so much fun that I have done zero work. So. I'm going to attempt to find our next camp spot all by myself, but I'm a little nervous. I've been driving by myself, obviously, for the last three and a half days. I've been following Beck. The reason I'm extra nervous is because it's not like we're going to a campground that I can just put my maps and drive straight there. It's this very vague paragraph in a really old guidebook that's like turn on this road whenever the drainage of the river oh i feel so alone without back gosh i don't even know which way to go make a u-turn We just got to the top of Kenosha Pass, which is the highest elevation that we'll reach today. We're currently at 11,880 feet. And the crazy part is, we have seven miles to go, and according to the chart, it's all downhill. Which, honestly sounds absolutely terrifying. Fun, but terrifying. If I get down seven miles of downhill, 
without going wheels up. All right, I'm officially gone as far as the maps are going to take me. And I'm on my own now. So now I'm just looking for that intersection with the drainage of the river. It's gonna be sweet. Here we go. Oh, it's gonna be a long seven miles. That was a rough start. <laughs> oh, man. The Colorado Trail really put the band to the test. seven miles I don't see drainage from uh, maybe that pond thing was drainage from the okay I'm just gonna go left and see what happens it's good to do things on your own oh thank goodness Again. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Oh, it. Smash my foot. Harder than riding uphill. I think this is it. I mean, I just have no way of knowing if I'm in the right place, and I have no cell phone service. This is such a weird feeling. I like our spot though. I think I'm gonna get to work. <laughs> Downhill separates the men from the boys. Not yet. They call the guys the dads. <laughs> Cracks me up because only one of them's a dad. Oh, mountain bikes are truly amazing. I think I, I fully came over the handlebars, but somehow I don't think I'm hurt. The glove saved me this time. Ah. I'm down, but I'm good. Oh, I reopened the cuts on my hand, but it could have been a lot worse. Ugh. Mom is packing the van. So, yeah! This is our campsite! Look, we gotta make them a sign. We just realized the boys don't know which way to go when they get off the trail. I'm gonna help make a sign. Let me get my markers out. I'm gonna help. So, Evie's getting the pens and paper. So, um,. We're gonna build a sign for the dad so they know where to go. Everyone's here except for the dad. So um broken everything. Yeah, so we're gonna put the sign a hundred miles away. So the dads know where to go. I don't know where to say, but I think it's gonna say come this way. I don't know. 
So bye. Like the whole bike like fell on top of me. That happens quite a bit actually. This is craziness. Thanks for waiting on me and checking on me. Ugh. Back on the horse. Gosh. This is about as bad as it's ever gonna get. <laughs> this is pretty bad. I hope so. Alright, go on and tape the sign to the trailhead. Adventurers, go this way. Take this sign too. Hopefully, they know that we're talking to them. So we don't get random hikers at our campsite. <laughs> now we've all three had a wreck today. Rick rode all of that incredibly hard downhill that I walked <laughs> like a pro and then fell over in the parking lot. My uh, cleat came loose, so I couldn't get my foot off my bike and just proceeded to smash directly under the ground. <laughs> uh... Where are the dads? It's about to get dark. I'm getting a little nervous. And then we just, I just, no, don't pour it in there. Okay, hold it at the end over there. Okay, they should have been back about an hour ago. We're both a little nervous, so I'm gonna drive into town so I can get reception, so I can see if I can find their location. This is much faster than I came down this road. Okay, according to this, it looks like they're right here and that's where we're camping. So I think they're okay. I think they're okay. I think they're really close. I'm so nervous. Oh, I hate this. We made it. I'm so mad at you. Why? Because I didn't know if I would make it. Okay. It's uh, day five and we just pulled the data off the heart rate monitor that I was wearing yesterday. According to this, my average heart rate was 115 beats per minute, max heart rate of 151 beats per minute. And I think they determine the calories you burn based off of your weight and your average heartbeat. So according to this app, I burned 3,867 calories, which is honestly quite a bit less than I thought it was gonna say, especially with everything we've been eating. We might be the first group to finish the CT and actually gain weight. It also says that we need 47 hours to recover. It's been uh, 12 and a half since we got off the bikes. <laughs> Segment seven, so I specifically have written really hard. I think we're gonna be hiking most of that. So pack extra food, maybe a headlamp, just to be safe. That's what we're doing today. Today might be a little longer of a day than we were anticipating, but I'm sure we'll be fine. <sighs> it's always hard to start with a big climb, but I put as much food and water in my body as it'll take. Usually get a pretty good side cramp to start the morning. Whew. Ready girls? Ready! I'm nervous about the first bump. Let's take it nice and slow. Woo. Forgot I was on rocks. <laughs> I closed everything. Okay. I am not sad that this is the last time I will ever drive down this road. Ooh. That didn't sound good. I have so much stuff in here right now. I know. I really don't really want a kind bar, but it's the only thing I can find. Got me a ginger come. Ginger kombucha all over my pants. I'm really 
realize how much I was shaking up over here. That was rude. Literally just got run off the road with those big four wheeler things. You know what? I'm just gonna put this in the door. Forty-five minutes in, first snack break, and we've already climbed a thousand feet. Whew. Definitely the hardest start to a day yet. We're feeling, feeling strong. Anyways, day five. Part of me feels like I can't believe it's already day five, and the other part of me is like I don't remember what life was like before the bike trip, before I was a support band. Aha! Didn't even fall. So far so good. After yesterday, I'm like, wow. Smooth single track. <laughs> Nicely done. So today is the first day that we are not meeting up with the guys for lunch. We're driving straight into the town of Breckenridge, however, All right, if this next part looks way more intense, it's because I've given Rick the chest strap. Oh, Don't show off for the camera and hurt yourself. I'm in hospital later today, it's because of this chest strap. I'm gonna go 10% bigger. <laughs> Okay, I lied, we're not in Breck. We came to Frisco and oh my gosh, it is so cute and there are mountains everywhere. It basically looks just like Breck, maybe better. Wow. Pretty cool. Civilization. That's a Breckenridge ski resort. This looks absolutely terrifying. Good luck guys. I just got settled in our new friend's driveway for the night and now I'm gonna get to work. But first, I'm gonna make myself another cup of coffee. This is the first time we're not rolling into a freshly cooked meal from the girls for lunch. Instead, we're sitting under a bridge with <laughs> leftover pasta in a bag. But in some ways it kind of feels like this is what we should be doing because all of the other people that we meet on the trail are camping in their tent every night, carrying enough food for four days. We've got it good. Poor Nate. All right, we're about to start segment seven. This is the one that Rick was talking about this morning that's supposed to be one of the harder ones on the trail. Lots of hiking, we think. And from what we've been told, these next few segments is where a lot of people tend to drop out. So we're gonna power through. I hate this, I hate this, I hate this. Ugh. Survival. All right, you can find me here the rest of the day. I think we're all feeling a little defeated at the moment. Just got a text from Nate that said, we're not gonna make it over the pass before dark, so we're gonna turn around and head into town. Must have been really tough. We just made a really tough team decision. We're all feeling strong, and like we have plenty of energy to make it over the pass, but we realize that it's four o'clock and at the rate that we've been going, We'll be coming down the other side of the pass in the dark. None of us have headlamps. The only responsible option is to turn around and head back into town. So 
day five and this will be the first time that we haven't made the goal that we set out to make in the morning which is a little bit of a bummer but at least it's the first day we have a town to go to hang out civilization for the night rest up a little bit come back strong tomorrow this feels weird civilization been having as much fun as me This is gonna be beautiful. Five days of dirt is about to be gone. I've uh, been wearing shoes the whole time and somehow my toes look like this. Ugh, I'm looking rough. No better feeling than taking off bike shorts. Ugh. I feel like a new man after that shower. Also discovered about 10,000 new cuts. Everything burned as I washed myself. <laughs> I also realized that I was so excited to get myself clean that I completely forgot to explain what's going on. Rick actually has a friend who lives in Frisco, which is right outside of Breckenridge, and he's been nice enough to let us park in his driveway for the night and also get a shower and do some laundry. Oh, and all I want to do is take a nap now that I'm clean. <sighs> Desperate not to have to do an extra four miles up the mountain. That one. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> oh, this is what we do. Oh yeah. Oh. There was a sign on the tree back there that said "end of road" like a mile ago. Did you see that? Yeah. <laughs> Everything looks to be more or less intact. Oh man, we'll save nice. travels. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, thanks for the ride. Nice to meet you. Nice thanks to so meet you. Hospitality. We're about two miles into the trail and so far we've managed to ride our bikes about 100 yards. But the only thing that we're trying to accomplish today is getting up and over the pass that we turned around at yesterday. So it should be a relatively short day. I think it's about 10 miles and 2,500 feet, but it is over an exposed path that sits somewhere around 12,500 feet. A little gray today, so a storm could definitely make it interesting. It's really hard to push a bike with one hand. It's not even, I don't even know what time it is. Okay, it's later than I thought. It's noon. It's already been such a morning. I ended up staying up till four to finish the vlog, and then we woke up to no power. It's been a while since that's happened. Unfortunately, I think with all of the crazy bumps in the road that I've been driving on lately, something came unplugged. So we couldn't make coffee, nothing was charging, it was just a mess. And then the guys leave, and I've never plugged in the van before. I didn't know what cords to use, we had all these cords. Thankfully, Beck came and helped, and we're plugged in, and we're charging, and now, I'm about to take my first shower in six days. So, today is looking up. Stressful start, but it's gonna be a good day. Right, Evie? Yeah. This is, oh, it's like hard to get enough traction to even push your bike up, it's so steep. I am a new woman. We pretty much just pushed our bike up the mountain for three hours straight. Looking forward to a little bit of a rest and a snack at the top, but the storm's blowing in, so we've got to get down as quickly as we can. Here we go. leave the van charging here for the day and the girls and I are going shopping. I think we deserve this. <laughs> Hi, so 
Right now, my mom and Kara are in REI. Then we're gonna go to Rainbow Park and have a little play. So, from where we are at the top of the mountain right now, we're riding all the way down to the bottom of the Copper Mountain Ski Resort, which is, which is down there, down there in the valley. It looks really cloudy right now. It's pretty cloudy and smoky because there's a big fire going on. So that's the schedule. The dads on the Colorado Trail, they are probably, I mean, I don't know what, we're gonna have to text Dusty, Nate, and my dad to see what's going on there and see where they are. Okay, so. That is our plan for the day. <laughs> I forgot my gloves in the van and I just felt like I was riding naked the whole time. Oh my gosh. <laughs> no crashes though. Yeah, I don't, I didn't. Sweet. I only spent a little money. Set the alarm, get yeah. you guys warmed oh, up. Really. The he ultimate snack, <laughs> 400 <laughs> calories. Perfect. Ah, oh, I hate this drawer! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I just want to get on a bike. I found my shorts. Well, that's weird. They're in a drawer exactly where I told you they might be. Who puts dirty shorts back in a drawer with clean clothes? I do, and you leave them on the floor. Ugh. Oh, it's just morning. It's day seven. What did you do? Oh, I bent my fingernail back so far. Why were you biting your fingernail? I bent it. Oh, I thought you said you bent it. <laughs> Why are you being so difficult this morning? <laughs> I need my beats. <laughs> okay, today I'm driving the van for the fourth time and we're gonna get an oil change, which I'm nervous about because I've never done this before. I mean, Nate's been doing good keeping up with Dusty and Rick so far, but I'm still nervous. And I really hope he remembers his gloves today. OMG, Beck's turning. <laughs> Your entire drawer just fell on the floor. <laughs> I'm glad it didn't fall on your foot. <laughs> oh, now I'm dizzy. I'm dizzy. All right, thanks, girls. Bye. Bye. See ya. We literally just dropped the guys off on the side of the road. All right, day seven, segment eight. Spirits are high. Everyone's feeling good. We are starting the day with a huge climb right up the Copper Mountain Ski Resort. I believe segment eight is something like 25 miles and 4,500 feet of vertical elevation gain. But after two short days, I think we're all hoping we can do a little more. It doesn't sound like we're doing good right now, but I think everybody's kind of falling into the rhythm of the bike ride. Either that or the, the two short days and a little extra rest. Has everyone feeling a little over optimistic? Wow. So like Nate said, I'm going to get our oil change today, which I've never done in any vehicle that I've ever owned. I guess I'm super spoiled. And I'm just gonna follow back. The only advice Nate gave me is don't let them talk me into buying a bunch of expensive stuff. They're gonna come back with like tinted windows. <laughs> 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 these beautiful bagels. 
We've got avocado, turkey, two types of cheese, some kind of berry sauce, and not a bad view. The crazy thing is yesterday we actually came over top of that mountain right there, rode down the face, and this morning we've worked our way all the way up this valley. Well deserved. In one mile, keep right onto North Poplar Street. This is fun, but also terrifying. I'm just waiting for my pedal to clip the edge. Yee-hoo! Ow! Oh. Hi. Right, we dropped the bands off, and now me and the girls are getting some lunch. Yum. Is that so good, Frankie? Uh-huh. Yeah. Tara, Frankie, the other yeah. Made it to the top of the first pass. These signs are keeping us on track. So we're riding this path all the way across here, somewhere down through here, and it wraps up. We're going over that ridge right there. I feel like it looks a lot closer on the camera. Van's still not ready. Man, this is great. Ow. Ow. <laughs> Wow, apparently getting your oil changed takes forever and costs about $200. Now I know, it is already 341. The guys are almost to the peak. And I guess we're heading to Leadville now. All right, we just reached the peak of our climb. We're coming over Kokomo Pass at 12,300 feet. It's about to be seven miles of downhill from here, which means I'll be lucky if I don't go over the handlebars. That's terrifying. No, I'm on the walk. I'm on the walk. Not dying today. All right, here we go. Oh, going into the bush. Oh, wow. That was so fast. <laughs> you have to go higher than the back. This is definitely one of the highlights of the trail so far. I'm sure it's going to be impossible to see in the GoPro, but right up here on the ridge, there's about 40 mountain goats. Heads up, sheep. Bah. That was too good. We're about a 10 minute drive away from Leadville, but we just pulled over on the side of the road because according to their GPS tracker, the boys should be driving up any minute. So we're gonna see if we can catch them. Maybe give them a snack or a cold drink. All right, making the handoff, no pressure. This is awesome right here too. These trees, it's amazing. I gotta take a hand break. Ah, oh, my hand. That was awesome. So good. Oh, segment eight is in the books. Two of the three of us are feeling good. Dusty's stomach, not so much. Planning to just take the road all the way into Leadville, another eight miles and stay at Rick's house tonight, but still waiting on Dusty, so we'll see how he feels. Yeah, right here. Right. I'm back, Dusty. Yeah, yeah, I 
All right, Desi's pushing through. We're gonna try to knock out another nine miles and a thousand vertical feet before it gets dark on us. Segment nine is another wilderness area, so we're on another road detour, which should make you go by faster. Oh, it's empty. This is beautiful. We're home. Good work, Dusty. This is why we rode the extra leg today. Just for the pizza. Oh, it's so beautiful. It's just too beautiful. So we got to the Colorado. We got to. Oh, I almost forgot my sunglasses. <laughs> Would have been tragic. Close one. So dirty from yesterday. Day eight. It's a little short 30 mile ride. No yeah. problem. Time. Yeah. A week ago, he had never even ridden 30 miles in his life. Oh, how quickly things change. We are going to be at Rick and Beck's house for the next two nights, which means I don't have to do any driving today. I'm gonna be here all day long. And I'm so excited because Look at this mess. I'm gonna clean out the van, I'm gonna wash our clothes. It's gonna be great. Oh dear. Thankfully we're at Rick and Beck's house so we have plenty of water. Whoops, once again. We crushed the first 11 miles of the morning in just under an hour because it was mostly downhill. And now we're literally pushing our bikes up the side of the tallest mountain in Colorado. The amount of dirt that is in our bed right now. Oh my gosh. There are actual rocks in the bed. That feels good. I think that's the longest we've gone without converting the bed. I just feel so productive when it's a desk. But I still have lots of cleaning to do. Pretty much been storing everything under the bed since I could. Don't even know where these came from. Uh-oh. It's looking pretty dark out there. And now it's raining. I just went to pick them up though, so I think they'll be okay. I think I probably feel better than I look right now. <laughs> After one week, I've been over the handlebars three times, this afternoon being one of them, which is what this is all about. My hand from the first wreck is healing up nicely. Except for, that's starting to look a little infected, huh? Yeah, okay, maybe not, that one hurts. As you can tell, I just got out of the shower, so it's a good day. Also just started raining a little bit, but we didn't get rained on at all while we were riding today. Even though it did turn into a little bit bigger of a ride than we were expecting, I kind of figured out as we get going through these days that it's the unexpected that makes it hard. Yeah, you kind of get used to just the grind of wake up, sit on your bike all day, pedal, eat a snack. But when you start feeling it is when maybe you kind of have a headache or your stomach hurts or the maps aren't right and so you gotta go way higher than you thought and it's those unexpected things that you really gotta kind of dig deep and find another gear to get through but that's part of the journey and it's all been great at this point i thought it was just going to be a miserable experience to like get on the bike and just keep pedaling every day but so far like physically or like, like stamina wise, I've held up a lot better than I thought I would. It's like these unexpected things that are kind of nagging me at this point. Like, I think I have about 50% strength in this hand. I don't know if you've ever like tried to like open something like right when you wake up and you feel like you have no strength. That's what this hand feels like. And I don't know if it's from, from the crashes or like your hands just kind of get beat to death as you're riding downhill, but, but it doesn't hurt. I just don't have any strength in it. Then I had this like really sore spot on my butt, but that's probably to be expected after over 200 miles. Week seven, it's been a blast. I think we're starting to enjoy it maybe more than we were initially. It was just, there was a lot of walk a bike, we're, hike a bike, we're kind of used to that now. Um, you know, we, we kind of know each other's pace. We 
know when to take breaks, we know when to eat. A lot of stuff we do is just not spoken, we just know to do it, so kind of just come together as a nice little team. After the first couple of days, whenever I was talking to the camera a little bit, there was definitely more of like a, hopefully I make it through the Colorado Trail. <laughs> I'm not positive I'll make it. Now I'm feeling way more optimistic, um, and I think something really bad would have to happen for me not to be able to make it, even though we're only about halfway through now. Um, so, fingers crossed, no wrecks, or serious injuries at least. There's gonna probably be some more wrecks. When we first started this, I really thought there was like a 50-50 chance I would finish. At this point, a weekend, not quite halfway, but almost. I'm feeling like definitely make it to Durango as long as I don't end up in the hospital. I have to try to get down to the finish by September 2nd, so Dusty's wife doesn't get too upset. But I also think it's a good goal. Nice that we've got that. I think at this point, like, it's easy to just have fun with this and like not take it too serious. Even though it is hard, there's a lot of excuses to get off trail and do things. So if we didn't have like a deadline of some sort, we could very easily be distracted and take probably take way longer. So it's good that we've got this like 16 day time frame. Gotta say, I'm just happy to be doing this. We've been biking through probably some of the best single track in the world, especially just natural single track, you know, no man-made jumps. It's just all raw earth and it's beautiful. Bike up a mountain in the morning, go across the top of it for a couple miles, bike back down. It couldn't be better. Okay, we're staying at uh, Rick and Beck's bed and breakfast for the night, so I'm gonna go take a shower. Hey, before you go, don't forget to check out omaze.com forward slash Karen Nate for your chance to win the customized 4x4 Mercedes Sprinter van. The chamois gonna like, ice up on you on a downhill. Like in the valley. <laughs> it's not even that wet. No. <laughs> no. I don't know why everybody's making a big deal about my chamois. As soon as you put that in the river, I was thinking, man, that is not a good idea. <laughs> you tried to tell me before. It's not wet, is it? It doesn't feel wet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll just push. <laughs> You're flying! <laughs> How far was our last nine miles? We've done 38.17 miles today. So our last nine was, I guess, about 14. <laughs> Rick is trying to convince us that he's seen a bear. Um, I but did. I'm skeptical because we have a bet going on and whoever sees a bear first, the other two have to eat a piece of toast with chamois butter on it. Sure. I don't get eaten by the bear just so you guys have to eat chamois butter. Oh, shit. Stink. Wait. Well, no, I, maybe it's not it there. It's like behind that pine. That's where we ran to. Going up there, Nate. You got to <laughs> sit here. You'll have proof at least. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah, see? Poetry. If it appears that we're injured or in distress, zoom in a little closer, it could just be the breakfast book. Hi! Now I'm gonna read a book to you. It's called A Lesson Before Talking. He says, What's this made up, okay? There's another van. The Colorado Trail. About that. I feel like I'm horrible at blogging. Okay, I'm gonna stop recording, bye. And this is the funnest place ever. No, I had it out. I'm never gonna feel it at this place. Hi. Bye bye. I'm doing my thing I want to do. I'm doing my thing I'm doing. That caught me. Your turn. Be in a party. This is my split. Oh, why is mommy's bike on the ground? I don't know what it is. Look it. Can I move it somewhere? Yeah. Careful. I am. I'm always careful. <laughs> <laughs>